Windows Utility has been improved drastically. If you're not familiar with Windows Utility, it's the second most popular utility from PowerShell in the world, according to GitHub. That's kind of crazy. Something I, I made as a goof four years ago has evolved as much as it has. Let's get on the desktop, show you how to run it, what it is, what it does, and what it can do. Because, wow, it is amazing to see its progress. To run it, right-click the Start menu, click Terminal as Admin. From here, you have an Administration PowerShell prompt. You can do IRM, ChrisTitus.com forward slash win pipe IEX. This goes out, grabs the script winutil.ps1 from GitHub and launches it. This isn't an executable, meaning you don't have to install anything. Everything just launches as is. Once you click, click X over here, it's gone for good. It's, it's gone off your system, uh, meaning it never installs. It just runs live and then, hey, I think all programs should do that. It's a dead art in Windows. Having said that, this is the first page. The install page can install any of these programs. This has actually been fine-tuned over this past update. One of the big, huge changes was how we install programs. Some programs like be installed from an admin system-wide prompt, some like from a user admin prompt, and some like from an unelevated user prompt. It just depends on the developers. But basically, we've changed how this interface is with all these programs. So even if it's Spotify or some weird program that installs a different way, if it's in Winget, it will install. So you can now click and then hit install, and you're off to go. If you want to get your install, just click this button. It'll get all the programs that are currently installed on your system. And you can actually click update all and it'll update all your programs for you as well. And if you're installing on a whole bunch of systems, or let's say I always install these same programs, another cool feature is you can actually click here, click export, and then just write a new file. I actually have one right here. We'll just save it over this one. And we now have a JSON file with all of our settings and all the programs on this system. So we could take that go to another system, copy that over, and then just click uh, here, we'll clear the selection, import, and then we just import that file directly in and it has all the settings we have it by defaults right here. So pretty, pretty awesome. Uh, very easy way to install upgrade files, even uninstalling. Moving on to tweaks. I like to just hang out with the recommended tweaks. When in doubt, the essential tweaks is the only thing you should mess with. This is what I like to do on a brand new install. I just like all the essential tweaks, click run tweaks, and you're good to go. Here, I'll show you kind of what it does on the background. We can rerun these at any time. So if a big feature update happens and you notice everything kind of gets a little slower because Microsoft re-enabled all the services and things of that nature, you just click that, click run tweaks. It'll go through, reapply everything from Ono shut up, set the proper services to manual, and then redo the registry tweaks. It'll also do a disk cleanup, which is, this is the official Microsoft disk cleanup. Gets rid of all your temp files, kind of clears out the system. So it'll save you some space as well, uh, while also making your system run faster. As far as the advanced tweaks, there's nothing in here I recommend. <laughs> if you click anything in here, it could mess up things. So that's why uh, I think this, this whole section, I'm gonna revamp a little bit. Uh, UTC is great. If you're a Linux user out there and you dual boot, you notice your time settings are messed up. It's because Microsoft tries to base everything off local time because they're crazy. <laughs> where the whole rest of the world does like the Unix standard where everything's based on uh, GMT time. But I digress. This actually fixes Windows to work just like every other system out in the world to where it, it's based off of, uh, you know, the UTC. So it, it fixes all that for your time. Removing all Microsoft Store apps and removing Edge. Both these are not recommended. Don't do these. They will break things. Uh, I, I left them in just because there's a lot of people that do like to remove everything and they're okay not using any Microsoft products. But I don't recommend it. I always say use with caution, not recommend it. I just leave it in there as popular as it is, but please don't mess with it. A new thing that's been habit added with this update is the customize ONO shutup tweaks. You click that, it actually relaunches ONO shutup and shows you all of your settings. So if there's something in here, you're like, you know what? I really kind of want to tweak this with ONO. This will actually download it directly from ONO, launch it, show all your settings. And then if you want to be a little more granular, you can 
with your own oh if you want to set like a custom dns you can do it from here as well and then just these are most mostly you know user-based widgets like i'll probably disable taskbar widgets as like using this and then having a pop out with like the latest news is just aggravating on so many levels uh, but that's this page config this has been expanded over time. Uh, the big thing on the legacy panels, most of this I don't care about. I still use power panel a lot to do ultimate performance and, and properly set a lot of my power management. Microsoft's on this big like green kick or whatever where they like strip down your system or or basically uh, force your, your CPU into a lower processor. Uh, and sometimes that can affect performance. And I like just, hey, just give me 100% of my system all the time. And that's how I just use Power CPL and, and get into that. Uh, the other big one I like to use from legacy panels is sound. Like just setting this as default, testing, changing things, you know, doing mmsys.cpl, which is that's what this is called. Uh, you this, this is just easy access to these old legacy panels that frankly I think are still better than the modern counterpart. And then just adding features through here, you know, adding WSL, adding enable F8. Uh, boot recovery very easy to it's a simple tweak but i think hey it's nice to have on startup you could hit f8 and then get into safe mode if you wanted with that tweak setting up auto login let's say you don't want to log into your pc you just want it to you know hit the power button and then be on your desktop not the most secure thing but it's there if you want to do auto login if you have problems with windows update this actually goes through and uses an official uh, technet script that most of the professionals use to reset windows uh, Windows Update. So let's say a virus gets in and messes up Windows Update, or you use some weird tool on the internet to disable it. Uh, this will actually reset it to stock standard. Uh, same with network. Sometimes, you know, net network like WinSock gets infected and other things. This actually runs an int IT, IP reset and also Win, WinSock reset. So much, uh, a really good way to reset your network if you have networking issues. Then we have system corruption fan. Um, this is a long tool to run, obviously, unless you're experiencing a lot of corruption, I don't recommend it, but it uses as FC scan now and then a DISM restore health to where it should bring back, you know, missing components. Let's say you rip out all of your apps in your system or the Microsoft store goes bye-bye. Uh, this probably will grab it back, you know, and it's worth doing if you're trying to save and install. And then if you have Winget or install issues from the main pad, Winget install will help with that and then removing Adobe garbage. Over on the updates page, the big one I like to do here, just doing security updates. This is good for Windows 10 Pro. Home users, this is not applicable. Uh, you, you either pretty much have to have updates or disable all updates over here uh, because group policy objects don't work on it. But in business, this is basically what we do is disable or delay feature updates for two years. So you're never getting like the latest update as it comes out, because that usually introduces a lot of bugs and it's not fun, <laughs> but it does grab security updates after delaying them four days. Microsoft usually releases all their updates on Tuesday and you never want to update on Tuesday, at least not in business, because usually there's some bad updates that get sprinkled in a couple times a year and waiting four days puts it all the way to the weekend. And the idea is usually a bad update will get spotted before Friday and get reverted. So if you wait four days and you patch on a Saturday, you're good. And then usually it's the weekend. So nobody's in the office and then uh, you can you know, easily remote in or uh, come fix any issues that happen. That's why we do it that way in business. And honestly, I recommend you to do it at home too. There's no reason that you should be the guinea pig for Microsoft. And that's why I created that just one click to, to establish that for those using Windows Pro. And then the final thing is MicroWin. Uh, MicroWin is how we're, we're basically copying like NT Lite and making your own ISO, kind of stripping down things. And we're working on a driver integration and some other stuff right now, which has been so, so good. So MicroWin, huge uh, improvements. We've done a lot of improvements over the past three to four months. There's still a lot to go here though. It's not completely in its done setting yet, but we're getting there. And I think here, probably at, towards the end of this year to next year, this should be perfect. But right now, 
It's what we're trying to approach. I'm working on some performance improvements. I know some other uh, contributors are working on integrating directly all your current drivers into the ISO. So when you create this on your system, it'll grab all your current ones. So you got to reload it. It'll already have all your drivers in there. There's a lot of other fun stuff we got going, but that's going to have to wait for the next update. And if you do want to contribute and help fund this project, go to cttstore.com. We do sell an executable wrapper. So by all means, you can buy this and have a little XE to run, uh, but not needed. Again, this is all free and open source if you want and launch it directly from an elevated PowerShell. You can do that. If you do buy the executable wrapper, a lot of times it does flag it as a virus. So you do have to go into Defender and exclude the executable because you know it, it does need to require from admin level. I made a video about you know, how your antivirus lies to you. And this is one of the instances that it holds true. But I thought I'd mention it here at the end and also show some of the new features we've done directly on the actual GitHub site itself. The releases, anytime we do a major release, I'm going to create a basically in time PS1 file so you could easily go back and run this and it would be at this date. So 420 release, which is what this video is based off of. You can see all the big changes that have been made. Huge shout out to OG MRK. He's been probably the biggest contributor this past round. He has done such a great job of just squashing issues left and right. And his pull requests, by far the best I've seen in the four years I've been accepting commits on here. I love his pull requests the most because if he's fixing storage sense, it's like a four line fix. And he just puts four lines up there. He doesn't submit anything extra to it. He doesn't go, hey, you had uh, two spaces and I wanted four spaces and I changed all the formatting and reorganized everything and then tries to submit. No, none of that, which I get a lot. And he's he's just a fantastic contributor. I, I can't say enough. If he isn't hired by a big company, he will be. He's going places with those pull requests he's done. My God, man, thank you so much. And then uh, the other people I want to give a shout out to, Rux Undersort, he had the idea for the wind get fix, the waterfall of going between how to install these programs and fixing some of the programs like Spotify that was causing problems. Now those programs can install properly because of the idea from Rux. I just mean, you know, took a lot of his code and then just tweaked it a little bit to get it that last extra mile. And then Coding Wonders been working a lot on MicroWin. So big shout out to Coding Wonders. He, he fixed, I think, the ESD conversion from a lot of Windows 10 ISOs from Microsoft were had ESD instead of install.wim and he helped with the conversion there. And then we're still working on some other stuff like O O tweaks from, from Merrick, Meritech. Uh, that, that was really good. And uh, these, you know, something we're, we're still working on edge removal. That's something that still eludes me 100%. It's one of those things I think hopefully Microsoft just buckles and allows us to uninstall it. It's kind of crazy that... We have to play this cat and mouse game on how to remove edge. I've been doing it for like a year or two and I'm kind of exhausted, <laughs> but that's the big update here. I just wanted to say thank you guys to everybody that's contributed, whether it's code or whether you, you bought the executable over here. Thank you guys. Uh, without all your support, I don't know where this project would be, but it just blows my mind when I come back here and look that we've had over like 2000 something issues and pull requests. We have over 200 commits. This project's been going on for four years now, and it started from just a, a CLI script from my admin days that I just kind of cobbled together and said, here, someone else might enjoy this. And then like, hey, I want a GUI. And then just seeing all these different contributors, because over the years, over 130 people have contributed code to this project. And uh, a big part of that is me learning how to, how to maintain it and be able to do all this we just redid all the unit tests. I had to learn all about that. Uh, the whole structure of this was done by developer Derp several years ago, and that made it all granular. So it rebuilds into this one PS1 file because before I was just manually editing a 10,000 line code that was almost impossible to maintain. And now this is an auto-generated file. So if you need to change something in the GUI, you just change it over here in XAML. If you need to change something like in Winget, you just go to the functions Winget. And it is just so nice. So if you do ever contribute to the project or let's say you want to add an application to it, uh, it can also be done by a non-coder because everything in the config folder over here, 
is just JSON files. So you could actually add these. And I go ahead and, and if you miss a value or something, you'll obviously have your pull request denied. But if you do submit a good pull request now, we can accept that uh, even from a non-coder. That's, that's amazing. Unless, of course, you submit it to the main branch and then it'll immediately get denied because it has to go to the test branch and everything gets tested before going out. Uh, whether it's from linting, whether it's from a GitHub action in my unit tests, there's a lot of things that kind of go through the development cycle now to where before it was just commit to main. And now we lint it, we go through, we unit test it and make sure everything's there from a structure standpoint. It has all the standards that we want. Everything's documented from a code perspective. And you can see just how awesome it is from a, a modular level. So from how this is developed, it's really helped me understand how like a, a programmer would go through a big project like this with as many contributors and main be able to maintain it uh, so i appreciate you kind of hanging with me because i know there's been a couple years where like you open up the project and it has like 200 issues and you're like oh my god titus what are you doing <laughs> and uh it just sometimes you get overwhelmed but now that we've have all these automated functions and everything's kind of done and we have so many contributors it's to the best spot it's ever been in its history. And I so look forward to what this looks like in a year, because if you want to contribute it, you just come right in here. You can add stuff if you're just new, but you don't need to submit this massive when you till PS one file, this file gets auto generated. So if you just edit this 10,000 line file, uh, it just gets rejected. And same goes for the GUI. The GUI's not done at all anymore. All these, the app, the features, the tweaks, all these are auto-generated now. They're dynamically generated by the compile script that happens automatically. So when something gets changed and added from the JSON file, it automatically configures, makes the new XAML, and then hits the compile, and then compiles all of it down into the WinUtil PS1. So it's, it's all just in this amazing state where I feel so good about everything going on. And if you ever do need to go back in time, you can simply come back into here, go into releases. And this is something new starting with this update is you can easily go back. You know what? 420, 2024 was the best win util ever made. And now I don't like this new update that added this feature. So you could just come back in here, download and run that PS1 file and you can always stay back in time if you want. Now, obviously, in uh, GitHub, you could do this anyways, but I know sometimes working with GitHub can be a little bit uh, difficult, especially when you don't understand it, where just downloading the direct PS1 and running it uh, would be very easy for most folks. So that's everything going on. A big shout out to everybody again that, that's worked on this. And with that, I'll see you in the next one.